Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. The Holy Spirit comes into our life to teach us, to train us, to lead us, to guide us, to convict us of sin, to convince us of righteousness. And I just want to encourage you before I go to the next point that you need to absolutely refuse to live with guilt, shame, blame, condemnation. Because it is not God's will. Well, we're teaching this weekend about wilderness mentalities. Wrong mindsets that we can have that keep us living in the wilderness when we should be living in the promised land. Is there anybody who ever kind of gets tired of talking about the promises and you're ready to live in them? Yeah. Right. We start out in Egypt, unbelievers separated from God. We come out of that. We head for the promised land. Everybody takes a little trip through the wilderness. That wilderness trip relates to carnality. It relates to living in your soul. A person when they're not saved is unregenerate. But when you're saved you can be regenerated in Christ or renewed in Christ and yet still be very carnal and fleshly. And as long as we're in that place, which means we're not spiritually mature, we keep just wandering around in this wilderness living. Living in the promised land not only means all the promises of God, but it also means that we have a degree of maturity in us where we're no longer living by what we think, what we want, and what we feel. What we think, what we want, and what we feel. We need to live by God's Word and His desires, not our own. We've all got a soul, and your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And our sweet little mouth expresses all of everything that the soul feels. <laughs> I want to think I feel, I want to think I feel. So we've been talking about the wrong mindsets that, that the Israelites had that kept them wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years trying to make an 11 day journey. Now by the grace of God we've already done seven of them and so we have three left today and uh, so we're going to start with number eight. Wrong attitude that the Israelites had that kept them from receiving what was already God's will for them to have. God can't bless me because I don't deserve it. Well, that's true. We don't deserve it. But that doesn't mean God can't bless us. Amen? You have to stop looking at what you do wrong and start looking at what He has done right. Amen? Now, Ephesians 1, 4, and 5 is a beautiful scripture that we want to look at together. Even as in His love, He chose us. Why did God choose you? Because He loves you. He actually picked us out for Himself as His own. God didn't just get stuck with you. He picked you out. Amen? And by the way, He knew all about you from the onset. You're no surprise to God and neither am I. He's not like, oh no, what did I get? <laughs> Picked us out as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be wholly consecrated and set apart for him, blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. Now that word reproach might even be a word that you're not that familiar with, but we are going to talk about it just a little bit today because the word reproach means shame and blame and disgrace and guilt and condemnation. So when we live under a reproach which God through Christ has rolled away, we don't have to live that way, but if we continue to live that way then all we'll do is wander around in the wilderness. We will never really enjoy what Jesus died for us to have. You're not built for guilt. So we need to learn how to admit what we've done wrong quickly, get into agreement with God quickly. Yes, God, you're right. I was wrong. No excuse. I'm wrong. 
The more excuses you make, the longer you're going to be in the wilderness. The more you blame other people, the longer you're going to be in the wilderness. I hope somebody got that message last night. Amen? And uh, facing truth about ourselves is a very difficult thing to do. Sometimes it can just shake you right down to your very core. But it's impossible to have spiritual maturity without facing truth. The two go hand in hand. So the Holy Spirit is given to us to do a lot of wonderful things, to comfort us, to counsel us, to lead us, to guide us, to, to help us pray, all kinds of wonderful things. But He's also put in our life to convict us of sin. And so that means that we need to keep a soft, tender conscience. You don't want to get a hardness on you to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The minute that you feel convicted that you've done something wrong or are not doing something right, you need to immediately ask God to forgive you. And repent means to turn around and go in another direction. So it's not just to be sorry you did it, but go ahead and do it again and again. It means that you're willing with God's help to turn away from it. You're sorry, you repent, you're very open about it, but then what you don't do is stay guilty and condemned. Because when we do that, we literally are of no value to God. He no needs us to be bold, know who we are in Him, pray bold prayers, and continue by faith to ask Him to bless us and equip us with everything that we need to get out in the world and become a shining light. How many of you have had plenty of experience in your life with guilt. And I would venture to say that probably some of you, that's still a huge problem in your life. I know it was a very big problem for me for a very long time. And I'm very grateful to say that God can get us through that. I, I really very seldom ever experience that now. Because I agree with God, I repent. I'm so sorry when I do anything that grieves the Holy Spirit. But I know that I know that I know that I know that God needs me up and running full of power. And He doesn't want me just wallowing around in, in self-pity and feeling sorry for myself and, you know, thinking about how bad I am and how no good I am and how I can never do anything right and on and on and on. So just don't waste your time doing that kind of stuff anymore because it's not God's will for you. Amen? So let's go ahead and look at the rest of this scripture because I want you to see it all. For he foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will. Now I love the Amplified because it's going to tell you why he's done all this. Because it pleased him and was his kind intent. Or just to put it plainly, he loves you because He wants to. Has nothing to do with what I do, what you do. He loved you before you ever accepted Him as Savior, before you ever cared. He loved you when you were in the depths of sin. And He would love you still even if you walked away from Him and went back to Egypt. He loves you. So He called us into relationship with Himself because He loved us because He's good, because He's kind, and He has many, many blessings for us because He loves us, because He's good, and because He's kind. And we have to start there. Now that doesn't mean that we can just live it any old sloppy, fleshly, carnal way that we want to and experience the full blessings of God. That doesn't mean God won't love you. He'll always love you because His love is unconditional and everlasting. And I think if we first get a real solid foundation about how much God loves us, then we really strive to do what's right, not to get Him to love us, but in response to His great love that has been given to us as a free gift. We love Him because He first loved us. I get up every day and, and work with the Holy Spirit to please God. I study the Word because I want to please God. I want to do what's right. And you're here this weekend because you want to do what's right. People that are just looking for an excuse to live a sloppy, sinful life don't take their Saturday and come to something like this. So you're here because you love God, 
because you want to do what's right. But don't ever forget that you don't get more of God's love by doing what's right. You've already got all of the love of God that there is to give. And when you know that, when you know how amazing it is that God loves you, and, and when you really realize how much you don't deserve it, then I think we can begin to respond out of the awesomeness of what God has done for us and want to do what's right. It doesn't become a work of the flesh or an obligation or something we feel like we owe God. It's what we want to do. Amen? And so, sometimes you have to fight your way through those lies of Satan that there's no way you can partake of the blessings of God because you've done this and this and this and this and this. The point is, is if you've made a turnaround, if you've received Christ, or even if you're here today and you just are in the deepest pit that you could possibly imagine, you have lived an awful sinful life apart from God. But if today you're ready to turn around and go in a new direction, you can have everything that I'm talking about right now, today. It doesn't matter what you've done if you're willing to let God change it. If you're willing to let God change it. So it's very important that we let God roll away that reproach from off of our lives. Actually, in Joshua 5, 9, when God called Joshua to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, he spoke to them through Joshua and said, today, God is rolling the reproach of Egypt off of you. And that was said to them before they went in and conquered their first town. You can't conquer. You don't have a conquering spirit if you're full of guilt and condemnation and always feeling bad about yourself. Don't say bad things about yourself. I said don't say bad things about yourself. Don't say downgrading things about yourself. Your words are powerful. And it's been proven now scientifically that you believe more of what you hear yourself say than even what you hear other people say. I'm assuming that you believe what I'm saying this weekend, but if you'll go home and take maybe 10 of the points that you've learned this weekend and you incorporate them into daily confessions and you begin to say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. God does love me. I don't deserve it. And that makes it even better. God does love me. And I will not spend my life living under condemnation, under guilt, because there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I love God. I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. We think too much about what's wrong with us and not enough about the changes that we have seen. And that little book that I just wrote recently called Eat the Cookie, Buy the Shoes that I'm sure nobody really understands the title. I kind of did that on purpose, you know, but um, it's about celebrating your progress and not always punishing yourself for your failures, but actually taking the time to think about how far you've come and get out from under this guilt because you're not built for guilt. Amen. If you feel bad about yourself all the time, you will not go boldly to the throne of God's grace and receive the help that you need. You will not boldly ask God to do great things in your life because even if you would whimper out a prayer, one part of you saying, but I know I won't get it because I don't deserve it. God is able. to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever dare to hope, ask, or think. You gotta be daring, and you won't be daring if you're not bold, and you won't be bold if you're just full of all these bad thoughts about yourself. The Israelites had a wrong mentality. Well, God can't bless me. 
because I don't deserve it. The next time the devil tells you that, well, God can't bless you because you don't deserve it. You need to say, thank you for reminding me that I don't deserve it. That's going to make the blessings that I will get even more exciting. Now, I'll be honest and tell you that if you've really spent a lot of time feeling guilty and feeling bad, you're going to have to fight a little fight. You're going to have to fight the fight of faith. I mean, I've even been known to scream out in my house when I was home alone. Shut up, devil! I have already told you that I will enjoy my life. You have to make your mind up that you are not going to not have what Jesus died for you to have. I will not go without the blessings of God in my life. I will not. And now somebody might think, well, you know, you got to be careful acting like that. <laughs> well, actually, I can tell you that's wrong. God likes it. God likes it when you refuse to let go. I don't know if you were here when I said this or not, but just a few days ago, God told me, you need to be a pit bull in the spirit. Just take hold and say, I'm not letting go. All right, let's look at Genesis 32. Take a look at Jacob, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Jacob, you might remember, cheated his brother Esau out of the blessing that belonged to the firstborn son. And he did it through lying and cheating and tricking his old blind father and pretending to be Esau when he wasn't and actually ended up through thievery and trickery getting what belonged to Esau. So he spent many years of his life in fear, running, hiding, feeling bad inside, always concerned that one of these days he was going to run into Esau and it was going to be curtains for him. Well, he finally got tired of it. And I want to tell you something. God can change nothing in our lives until we get tired of living the wrong way. Did you hear what I said? God cannot change anything in our lives until we get tired. Until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Nothing's likely to change. You've got to get some Holy Ghost determination and say, I will not live under guilt for things that I have repented for any longer. And you know what? I, I had such a problem with guilt, I didn't feel right if I didn't feel wrong. And that's the truth. God, I remember how horrible those days were. Always some little thing, little vague voice. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't read enough. You didn't pray enough. You can't remember what you read this morning. You were cranky with Dave. You were this. You were that. You were something else. And I mean, I always repented for everything that I did wrong. But somehow or another, I was missing the second portion of receiving by faith. I mean, I would say it. I know I'm forgiven. But I let my feelings dictate to me. You have to learn that your feelings will lie to you. They will tell you that you're still guilty when actually before God, you are not guilty at all. You say, well, how can I ever get over it? You've got to talk out loud to the devil and just tell him, I don't care how you make me feel, I know that I'm forgiven. I don't know, I don't care how you try to make me feel, I know that I'm forgiven. Can we practice? I don't care how the devil tries to make me feel, I know that I am forgiven. Amen? So Jacob finally came to a point where he was tired of living that way. And he got so desperate that he left everything he had. He left his family on one side of a brook, and it says that he crossed over, leaving everything behind, he crossed over to wrestle with God. And that's sometimes a very powerful place to be. Let's put the scripture up. And Jacob was left alone, and a man, capital M, wrestled with him until daybreak. What is that wrestling match between us and God? It's him being determined to get his way 
and us trying to give up our way. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, in other words, when, when the angel of the Lord saw that Jacob just flat out was not going to give up. When he saw that he didn't prevail against Jacob, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and Jacob's thigh was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Now, what's that all about? Well, he left Jacob with a little limp. And I think that was a good thing because there was always a little reminder there of what he'd come out of and what he was likely to go back to if he didn't stay in God's will. Now let's, let's look at the rest of it. Then he said, I love this, the angel of God that was wrestling with Jacob said, let me go. <laughs> let me go. For day is breaking. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing upon me. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. I will not let you go. No, I won't let go. No, I'm not giving up. If anybody can be blessed, I can be blessed. Don't have that wimpy, whiny, well, you know, I guess it's not for me. You know, if God wanted me to have that, he'd give it to me. Well, there's some truth in that, but you have to understand that God's no respecter of persons. And if you seek him and refuse to let go, you will find him. Be a pit bull in the spirit. And I'm not, you know, so everybody who owns pit bulls doesn't need to write to me and tell me I was talking down to their doggy breed. <laughs> that was what God said to me. You know, pit bulls are known for ferociousness and fierceness and taking hold and not letting go. And it's really wonderful when you can be a pit bull in the spirit and just as sweet as you can be in your dealings with people. Well, I had it backwards. I was a pit bull in the flesh and a wimp in the spirit. Now I've had a turnaround. Amen? So, Jacob went away with a limp, but he had his blessing. The Holy Spirit comes into our life to teach us, to train us, to lead us, to guide us, to convict us of sin, to convince us of righteousness. And I just want to encourage you before I go to the next point that you need to absolutely refuse to live with guilt, shame, blame, condemnation. Because it is not God's will for you. Now, all of us, when we do something wrong, we're going to feel bad initially. I mean, that's, there'd be something wrong with us if we didn't. But God has provided a way through Jesus Christ and the cleansing power of his blood to be completely washed from things that we do wrong and be made whole again. I love what the Bible says that the Holy Spirit Sit the, sit, uh, that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father continuously making intercession for us. Well, I figured out, I guess he does it continuously because I continuously need it. Anything that God is asking you to do or asking you not to do, he's asking you for your own benefit. You know, it might not feel good right now, but if you'll do things God's way, Whatever discomfort you go through is definitely going to be worth it in the end.